Good morning. Joining us this morning, we have our Attorney General, Ashley Moody. We have Sheriff Grady Judd from Polk County, uh, Wayne Ivey, Sheriff of Brevard County, and then we have Judge Andrew Bain from the uh, Ninth Judicial Circuit. The state of Florida is a law and order state, uh, and that means we support the men and women who wear the uniform, uh, who protect and serve. Uh, it means we have strong policies to hold criminals accountable for their misconduct. Prosecutors have a duty to faithfully enforce the law. One's political agenda cannot trump this solemn duty. Refusing to faithfully enforce the laws of Florida puts our communities in danger and victimizes innocent Floridians. Accordingly, I am today announcing the suspension of State Attorney Monique Worrell from the Ninth Judicial Circuit effective immediately. I'm appointing Judge Andrew Bain to take over as State Attorney for the Ninth Judicial Circuit. Judge Bain is currently a judge in Orlando. He is a native Floridian. Uh, he attended University of Miami where he played football and he received his law degree uh, from Florida A&M Law School and I trust that he will be a prosecutor uh, that faithfully enforces the law and will keep the communities of Central Florida safe. Monique Worrell's administration of criminal justice in the Ninth Circuit has been clearly and fundamentally derelict so as to constitute both neglect of duty and incompetence. The policies or practices listed in our executive order uh, suspending her uh, con that constitutes the grounds of suspension are as follows. Uh, one, a pattern or practice to avoid minimum mandatory sentences for gun crimes. Pattern or practice minimum mandatory sentences for drug tra trafficking offenses, pattern and practice allowing juvenile offenders to avoid serious charges and incarceration altogether, pattern or practice to avoid valid and applicable sentencing enhancements, pattern or practice limiting charges for child pornography, pattern or practice for seeking withhold withholding of adjudication in situations not permitted under Florida law. Prosecutors do have a certain amount of discretion about which cases to bring and which not. Uh, but what this state attorney has done is abuse that discretion and has effectively nullified certain laws in the state of Florida. That breaches her duties that she owes to the people of Florida under our state constitution uh, and provides the basis uh, for the suspension. And we can look to see all these different instances of people uh, who have committed criminal offenses, victimized people uh, because they were not held accountable in accordance with the laws of Florida when they had the opportunity to hold them accountable. Uh, in November of 2022, there was a 17-year-old Lorenzo Larry shot and killed his pregnant girlfriend, uh, DeShayla Ferguson. He had previously been arrested in May of 2022 on several charges, including carrying a concealed firearm, possession of a firearm on school property, and criminal possession of a firearm by a minor. But he was released after all these arrests. Worrell's office did not act on any of these charges until after he killed his girlfriend and their unborn child. In 2018, Jazeer Dobson invaded a home in Orange County and robbed the occupants at gunpoint. Dobson was charged with multiple counts of armed burglary with a firearm, robbery with a firearm, and false imprisonment. These charges carried a 10-year mandatory minimum sentence with the maximum of life in prison. After Worrell took office in 2021, five of the charges were not prosecuted and adjudication was withheld on the remaining. Withholding adjudication means that Dobson is not considered a convicted felon and possession of a firearm by a felon would not apply if he were rearrested in the future. And he was sentenced to only 51 weeks of jail time, and he was sentenced as a youthful offender. And then just this past weekend, uh, Worrell was at the center of another major controversy. Uh, Dayton VL was arrested in March of 2023 for sexual battery on a minor, as well as lewd and lascivious molestation. The arrest was made while he was on probation for another offense. That probation began in February of 2022, and yet he was still let out on bond and then tragically shot two Orlando police officers. I have no doubt that today's decision uh, is not only uh, consistent with uh, the Constitution and laws of Florida, 
and that we have a right to act. Uh, I know that today's decision, we had a duty to act to protect the public from this dereliction of duty. All right, we're going to have a few other people come up. So we'll start with our Attorney General, Ashley Moody. Today is a, a serious, solemn day. Anytime this occurs in the state of Florida, it, it's not what we would have wanted for the people of the state of Florida. But nonetheless, it is absolutely imperative for the protection of our citizens. And we're fortunate to have a governor committed to both the rule of law and to holding elected officials accountable for doing the jobs that they swore to do. And in this instance, Ms. Worrell failed to do the job for which she was elected. The job for which she was elected to do is a simple one. It is to protect the public by prosecuting people. She will say, first and foremost, she has a, another agenda before she's a prosecutor. The job she was elected to do is not to be a legislator, not to be a judge. She is a prosecutor who swore to prosecute those that violate the law. When a prosecutor fails to follow the law and do her job, those failures naturally have allowed countless citizens of the Ninth Circuit to be unnecessarily victimized. If she were allowed to continue in this office, her failure would continue to cause needless pain, suffering, and death. There are two stages which it is imperative to separate a dangerous criminal from the community. That is, once a dangerous criminal is arrested, before they go to trial, what we call pre-trial detention, and after they are convicted and sentenced. She fails in her practices in both of these, and that is why you are seeing people that are dangerous continuously victimize people in the Ninth Circuit, and I would submit to you in counties and other circuits, and I know that you'll hear from so, some that are interested in that today. I sat horrified as I watched the press conference on Monday regarding the two officers that were needlessly shot in the Ninth Circuit. Now this has happened repeatedly where you have a prosecutor that comes out after something has happened and feels the name to start explaining herself. It is not normal for a prosecutor to come out repeatedly after we have seen tragedy strike and, and insinuate it's not my fault. I submit to you this was in a way to distract from where fault should have laid. Now, you just heard about the fact that on Monday, she came out and said, insinuated that law enforcement was spreading misinformation that she failed to act. Under the rules of criminal procedure and under the statutes of Florida, in order for a dangerous criminal to be detained pre-trial, the state attorney has to file a motion for pre-trial detention. That was never done. Not only was it never filed, at the hearing, the prosecutor never asked for this gentleman, this criminal that raped a child and was dead to rights on that, stay in jail. The rule and the statute required for the judge to detain that person that that motion be filed, and it was never filed. So we could sit up here and go through example after example where someone was murdered, where someone was robbed at gunpoint, and how charges were either undercharged or not filed in that circuit. I can tell you about letter we received from the sheriffs there that detailed why she is not acting in a way that is protecting the public. But I believe what is important today is to use numbers to show you, not only did she not file a motion for pretrial detention to keep people, dangerous criminals, prior to trial and detention, after sentencing, after conviction, the only way that can happen for you to go to jail is if you get charged. So if a prosecutor does not charge you or undercharges you, a judge can't sentence you accordingly. So let's look at the numbers. Ms. Worrell, the state attorney in the Ninth Circuit, has dismissed more charges of defendants than any other state attorney in the state of Florida during the same period. From January 2021 through June of 2022, the latest publicly available data on the state court administrator's website, Ms. Worrell dismissed or did not prosecute criminal cases against 
16,236 adult defendants. To put her staggering numbers of dismissals into context and to counter what will undoubtedly be her defense that this was in some way political, I want to provide additional context. From January 2021 through June of 2022, the state attorney in Palm Beach County, who also happens to be of the same party, dismissed or no filed against 4,296 adult defendants. Ms. Worrell is dismissing during the same period nearly four times the number of defendants as are being dismissed or not charged in Palm Beach County. Ms. Worrell is dismissing or no filing charges against almost 43% almost half of defendants in the Ninth Circuit when they are arrested. Again, to give you context, the state attorney in the Miami-Dade County, again, similar party, is dismissing or no filing charges against only 22% of defendants. So as a percentage, this state attorney, Ms. Worrell, is dismissing or no filing charges against nearly double the defendants in Miami-Dade County. Miami-Dade County is a much bigger jurisdiction with more resource constraints than the Ninth Circuit, yet Ms. Worrell is dismissing charges or no filing at two times the rate. Indeed, Ms. Worrell is dismissing charges or no filing cases against defendants at a higher rate than any other prosecutor and any of our circuits in the state of Florida. And she is not choosing just to not prosecute adults who commit crimes. She frankly fails to prosecute juveniles at an equally high rate as adults. Florida Department of Juvenile Justice released a report a couple of weeks ago showing that she is no filing or not prosecuting juveniles who were referred after allegedly committing felonies 42% of the time and violent felonies 41% of the time. She has by far the highest rate and raw number statewide of no files and failures to prosecute juveniles. And whether you are an adult or a juvenile, the reality in the Ninth Circuit currently is that nearly half of the time, Ms. Worrell's office is not going to prosecute you if you commit a crime. Officers may arrest you. They even may risk their lives arresting you. And if you're in the Ninth Circuit, nearly half the time, the state attorney will not follow through. That is incredibly dangerous to the people in the Ninth Circuit. And if you're unlucky enough to get prosecuted, and you're a drug trafficker or a violent felon committing crimes with a firearm, defendants who are dangerous and harm the community more than others, her office is likely not going to seek a minimum mandatory prison sentence or get much of a prison sentence. As prosecutors, we protect public safety by upholding the laws of this state, even laws with which we may personally disagree. Exercising discretion does not mean abdicating responsibility. Ms. Worrell is abdicating responsibility as the circuit's top prosecutor, and that undermines our laws and our legal system. Meaningful and effective improvement in our criminal justice system cannot result in defendants that suffer no consequences and are allowed to continuously victimize others. Justice is not served and the public safety is not advanced by failing to seek to hold dangerous criminals in custody before they face trial, and it is not advanced by failing to prosecute nearly half of the defendants committing crimes in your circuit. Ms. Worrell has made justice in the Ninth Circuit almost an arbitrary coin flip. She has failed to do her job, and the citizens of the Ninth Circuit have and will continue to be victimized by defendants she failed to prosecute. Again, I, I commend Governor DeSantis this for taking this brave step and ensuring that the citizens of the Ninth Circuit have a prosecutor that puts their public safety as their very first agenda. Thank you very much. When Governor DeSantis was first elected, he was asked by the media about these laws that held people in prison. Now, he was a brand new governor, and certainly he had the opportunity there in front of the media to say, well, I'll look into it, I'll check it out. But he looked the cameras in the eye and says, I believe in truth and sentencing. You see, this governor has always put the victims, has always put the law-abiding citizens ahead of the criminals. 
always. And that's exactly what he's done here today. I've had the honor of being in law enforcement my entire adult life. And I know true, real leadership when I see true, real leadership. And that's what Governor DeSantis does every day when he comes to work. But let me talk about the suspended now State Attorney Worrell. This is the Worrell effect. This is the bottom line. Yeah, Governor would have been disappointed if I didn't have some of these. You know what I'm saying? Lacks prosecution plus you don't support law enforcement equals people aren't safe. That's right. The people of Orange and Osceola County trusted that she would do her job. I've talked to the sheriffs of Osceola and Orange, and I can tell you unequivocally they fear for the citizens of the community because despite their best efforts, no matter how many criminals you arrest, if the state attorney won't hold them accountable, then the community is not safe. Two Orlando police officers were shot in the face. You know why they were shot in the face? Because she didn't ask for a pretrial hold on a very, very dangerous person. So these police officers, out doing their job, encounter him. What does he think? Probably they're going to take me back to jail. Well, I'll just shoot them. Because, heck, after all, I probably won't be prosecuted. I'll be let out again. You know, before I turn the podium over to my colleague and dear friend, I want to show you a popular meme. This is fine. As the house is on fire, our little hot dog here says this is fine. He was a dog. Now he's a hot dog because he's a house on fire. Well, I have another one. Monique Worrell says this is fine. The fact that two police officers were shot in the, in the face, this is fine. Despite criminals not being prosecuted, this is fine. Despite violent criminals victimizing people in the community, this is fine. I'll tell you what's fine. What's fine is Judge Bain. And Judge Bain's going to get after these criminals like he did the people on the football field. He was an all-star on the football field. He's going to be an all-star as the state attorney. And none of this would have been possible if we didn't have a governor, Governor DeSantis, who said, I'm going to do what's right. Thank you, Governor. Good morning, everyone. And, uh, like Sheriff Judd, I've been in this business a long time, 43 years, about half as long as he has. I will tell you, <laughs> you know, I love you, Sheriff. <laughs> I will tell you this. This is very simple. When it comes to law and order, Governor DeSantis is not playing. Governor DeSantis, like I and all the others standing up here, took an oath, an oath of office to protect our communities. He understands that government's one and only responsibility is to protect its citizens. And his actions today, without question, saved the lives of citizens in Central Florida. But they also saved the lives of citizens in other parts of this state. Because just like Sheriff Judd and the other surrounding counties, those criminals that were being let out, not charged, not prosecuted, coming into my county as well. In fact, the two Orlando police officers that were shot are from Brevard County. I will tell you that no matter how good a job Commissioner Glass does, no matter how good a job Colonel Howes does, no matter how good a job Sheriff Judd or myself or the other chiefs and sheriffs in this, in this state do to put bad people in jail, no matter how good a job we do to put bad people in jail, if the state attorney is not being the voice for the victims, our efforts are wasted. We arrest the same people over and over again. Central Florida has been exposed to a state attorney 
that ignored her oath, a state attorney that ignored being the voice of the victims. And today, Governor DeSantis is the voice for those victims. <clears throat> this is simple about law and order. It's not about anything else. It's not about politics. It's not about likes or dislikes. Actually, I'm going to say it is about likes or dislikes. Governor DeSantis likes elected leaders that do their job. Their job of putting bad people in jail. Folks, we don't want to become some of these other areas we see around the country. New York's, Los Angeles, Chicago, Detroit, Seattle. I can go on and on. We don't want to become those. And we need strong leaders that are going to say enough is enough. No, we're not going to do the hug a thug program. No, we're not going to do soft on crime. What we are going to do is put bad people in jail. That's the oath we took. So, as I said, Governor DeSantis' actions today save lives. He remembers his oath. He remembers what it's like to be a prosecutor and to be the voice of victims, the only voice for some victims whose lives were stolen by criminals and then who were put back out on the street to harm others. Governor DeSantis understands that crime will rise to the level a community will tolerate. And he has zero tolerance for crime and even less for criminals. And I'm honored to stand here today and, and watch the action he's taking to save lives. Thank you. I'd like to first thank the governor for his leadership and trust in my ability to serve the people of the Ninth Circuit. I started my legal career at this office. This is where I learned from great attorneys like the late Pam Davis, Judge <coughs> sorry, Jeff Ashton, Judge Gabrielle Sanders Morsey, and Ryan Williams, amongst other many others. For me, this is a place where John Calvin's second purpose of the law came to life. The second purpose for the law is to restrain on evil. The law in and of itself cannot change the human heart. It can, however, serve to protect the righteous from the unjust. Sadly, instead of protecting the righteous from the unjust, the state attorney's office has allowed lawlessness to take root in our community. My goal as state attorney, I'm sorry, my goals as state attorney are to restore order and restore the faith in the law, restore our public trust, restore our relationship with our fellow partner, justice partners in law enforcement, and to create, last longing, sorry, create lasting relationships for local service agencies and nonprofits that are here to help serve our community. Our prosecutors are responsible for holding criminals accountable for their actions. It's a simple thing. Simple job. The legislature told us what our job was in Chapter 27 of our statutes. It's a very simple job. We are here to prosecute crimes and to hold people accountable. My plan is to bring back that simple understanding. Get back to the basics of what we're here to do. It does not accomplish anything to prosecute a case with no intent to stop crimes. I will make this office accountable to the community we serve and to ensure crimes, criminals who poison society, cause mayhem and murder, are held accountable under the law. We will be good partners to law enforcement, create partnerships that can change the tide and provide a safer, more prosperous circuit and community. We will work to find solutions uh, to the underlying issues that lead people to, to the criminal justice system, no matter whether the issue be mental health, homelessness, food insecurity, literacy, or lack of mentorship. My fellow prosecutors, especially those who live in the community in our, in our Ninth Circuit, but now work for other state attorneys, who have moved because you don't feel like there's a home for you here in your own community. I want to welcome you back 
to the state attorney's office with open arms. Thank you, Governor Santos, for your entrusting me with this position. God bless you all. The great state of Florida and the United States of America. All right. Best of luck. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.